Thank you so much for joining us on episode number 121 of the Real Life Runners podcast. It's a new year and it's 2020 and this is our first episode of the new year. Thank you for being with us. Today we're going to be talking about what it means to be a real life runner. What does that identity mean? What are some of the characteristics, values, challenges, and rewards? This is the Real Life Runners podcast and we're your hosts, Kevin and Angie Brown. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Now let's get running. So it's a new day. It's a new year. It's a new decade. It's a new decade. That's the crazy one. Decade filled with new possibilities. I mean, I'm under the belief that every day is can be a new beginning. I know you do really well of living that. There's a lot of people that wait until January 1st. And that's cool. You know, I mean, if that's the kind of person, if it, if it really helps you to have a new year and set new intentions and goals for the new year, then this is great. And so we did talk about goal setting in our last episode. So if you're thinking down the lines of goals and goal setting, go back and listen to episode number 120. That's what we covered last week. Yeah, it's a good one a great episode for you. Today, we really want to dive into the identity of a real life runner. We want to talk about what is a real life runner because we've talked about this identity in past episodes and about adopting this identity and taking this role on. And how we all are real life runners. Right. But we really want to dive into what it means in, in our eyes to be a real life runner. Like what the goals, what are the values, the characteristics, like what does that mean to actually say, I am a real life runner? I got to share the story from the car. Please do. Okay. So we were talking about- I'm not sure what story it is, but let's do it. Of our little one talking about this episode. Yeah. Where we were talking about how, you know, oh. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to record the episode after, after we put the kids to bed and, and, uh, you were like, okay, well, you, what was the topic on again? Cause you've got the outline of like all the different things right, and I go I and I write the, the outlines out. And yeah. You, but you had the idea already written down and you're like, this is the one where we're, we're doing, you know, being a real life runner. Like what is a real life runner, right? <laughs> and our little one pops up from the back seat and she's <laughs> like, wait, you're on episode a hundred and what? And you're just now defining what a real life runner is. Shouldn't you? done that a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> yeah that literally happened like a half an hour ago <laughs> on our way home so um yeah and we have you know throughout we have put bits and pieces out there of what it means to be a real life runner but today we really want to drive it home and really put this out there, what being a real life runner is. And so for those of you that are new and joining us, maybe you've just found our podcast episode. We are so happy you're here. So this is a perfect place to start because this is really what we are about. Like this is what this podcast is is about. It's what our company is about. It's what real life runners is about, is taking on these values and characteristics. I mean, it took us a while to really define what all these different values and characteristics are. And, And, you know, personal values and stuff is sort of an evolving thing so to to put it all out there and be like all right this is this is it Mm -hmm. i don't know if it's if this is just necessarily a a locked in concrete like most of these things are going to be stuck but it's still going to be an evolution we're all all a process that just continues evolving yeah absolutely and and that's one of the beautiful things about it is that the more we learn and the more experience that we gain our life just keeps evolving. We keep evolving as human beings, as people, as runners. And for Kevin and I, as as a company, you know, we, we started our coaching company a couple of years ago. And with the more people that we get to serve every year, the more we learn and the more we also learn about what sets us apart. Yeah, this does not look at all like what it was when we first started no, this thing. And, no. You know, when we were trying to figure out what the name of it even should be and Real Life Runners came out and, mm-hmm. you know, it was like, yeah, that that, that seems good because yeah. we're like, we've got a real life and life is important, but we're also runners. And, and we it, always talked about tying real life into running and tying running into real life, like yeah. the links between them. And that's still what it is. It's just on a much deeper level. I think that we, we just have a much deeper understanding of what that means now. Right. And now we've really kind of united it all with the the sort of tagline of run your life, mm-hmm. you know, be a real life runner, someone who really runs their life. Right. And using that identity, like I am a real life runner, taking that on right. is huge. So let's start out by the first defining the qualities of a real life runner. These are some of the qualities we believe a real life runner should have. All right. Well, one of them's kind of, kind of a 
obvious is there's someone who does things besides running. They mm-hmm. have a significant life outside of just being a runner. Right. They have a real life. Or real life, <laughs> yes. They run, but they also have a real life. And they have to try to figure out how to fit running into that life. Right. So there's sort of this perpetual balancing act. And it's not like you you get to spend an hour running and so then you get to spend an hour of not running. But you always kind of feel like you're, you're trying to figure out how to play both sides of this thing and fit everything in. That's that's part of the aspect of real life runners is it's this feeling of trying to fit everything in, which we'll talk about a lot more later. Um, but it is trying to get your family and, and work and then still take care of health and nutrition and get your, your run in for the day and, and all aspects of it all coming together. Yeah. And a big part of that is understanding that running is not selfish, but it also is selfish and that's okay. Yes. That sometimes uh, running needs to be the priority. Sometimes right. you have to take other things in your life and say, I'm not going to do that right now. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go out for my run mm-hmm. because every, every choice, when you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. Right. And when you say, yes, I'm going to go run now, you have to say no to other things. And sometimes, I mean, when you started going, that was saying no to the kid who was literally clinging to your leg, screaming, no mommy, no. Yeah, that was really hard. And I think as parents, you know, if you're, a parent of a younger child, it's very hard to prioritize yourself because they're your priority. The children are your priority. And so prioritizing yourself can be very difficult at times and feel very selfish. There's a lot of things that make you feel guilty as a parent. And this is one of them, I think, is is spending time away from your kids in order to do something that you want to do. Right. So if you've already made it towards the end of the day and, you know, your, your desire to go out for a run is waning and then you have the kids who are adding this like level of guilt feeling on top of it of like, no, no, don't go for a run. Stay with us. Don't you want to stay with us? It's really hard to get out the door. And yet you need to because right. running has huge physical and mental well-being. And it's better for your family too. Like, it really it, is. It really is. Like it's very difficult in the moment, but as a whole, you are doing something very good for your family because by running, you're making yourself a better person. You're not only improving your physical health, but you're also improving your mental health because if you're a runner, you understand the mental benefits of running. Yeah. And I mean, you're also just inspiring the people around you. There you go. Like, let's not, let's not discount that, that it's possible that you could be affecting family members. Maybe yes, directly your kids, maybe a spouse, but maybe there's another family member that just found out that you're a runner and they're like, wait, that random cousin of mine's a runner? Well, if they can run, I mm. could I could certainly run. Mm-hmm. I mean, we all just got together with family over Christmas. Maybe you just found that relative that turns out they're also a runner. And right. you're like, well, okay, so I should definitely be able to go out and run now. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so we say that running is not selfish for those reasons. Because by running, you're actually not only taking care of yourself, oh. but you are allowing yourself to show up better for the people around you and you are most likely inspiring people around you and you might not always know it right away like sometimes that inspiration isn't like wow you're such an inspiration i want to be like you wouldn't that be great (laughs) and and here's a trophy for my thanks and gratitude towards your inspirational acts yeah but it's like parenting right like so many times i talk about how sometimes parenting can be such a frustrating thing but that i just need to keep planting the seeds i keep planting the seeds and sometimes it takes those seeds a while to grow and sometimes it takes them you know there are some seeds that you plant that you see the you know little sprout pop up within like a week or so and that there are some that lay dormant you know for, a for while. seasons or years <laughs> seasons and, and seasons <laughs> it's like planting the bulb in the fall right yes. and you get the tulip in the spring but yeah. it lays dormant all winter long <laughs> yes you <laughs> hope that it's still alive under the snow at least that's what i'm told in places where it's cold <laughs> right but you know sometimes but then you do see it then you do get the glimpses of how the choices that you're making or the you know the way that you're choosing to parent or the way that you're choosing to live your life is making a positive impact on the people around you. And when you hear your kids say things that you've said already, positive things that you've said that you're mm-hmm. proud that they're repeating and they're repeating them to their friends. Yeah. Did that, you hear this story from last week? Yeah. When, I mean, when our older one did that to her friend? Yes. 
it, it's nice to see some of these things come through sometimes. Right. It's better than the, like, you never want the, the phone call home from school. Of, Did you know what your kid just said? That was mm. also something that may have been repeated. Oh, yeah. We no. haven't gotten that phone call. Thank no, goodness. Thank goodness. Yeah, but... <laughs> I've had to make the phone call. <laughs> yeah. But um, last week, um, our daughter was with her friend and... I'm friends with her mom and her mom said, oh, you'll never guess what happened. And the long story short, basically my daughter repeated something like about how her friend was manifesting something. Like she's like, like her friend was like acting negative and saying that she was like, you know, she didn't want this to happen. And our older one was like, looked at her and was like, well, if you're saying that it's going to happen, then it's going to manifest. And then my, my friend, her mom basically said that, Riley's face like our our oldest one's face just kind of like dropped and she was like oh my god I am my mother she goes (laughs) she like had the realization that she had just repeated what you said most people don't grasp the realization that they're turning into their mother in fourth grade but apparently she's a little ahead of schedule (laughs) what fourth graders dropping you know you're manifesting over there I don't know, but apparently that's what was happening. So it is sinking in. It just might not be the – we might not see it all the time. All right, but one of the other things just kind of bring this back into the real-life runners is um, there's times that runner needs to take the priority, and yes, sometimes it might feel like a bit of a selfish act, but there's other times that – other parts of your life need to take the priority that you're like, okay, well, this is my running schedule. I run on Monday, Tuesday, and then Thursday, Friday, Sunday, or whatever it is. And something comes up, you've got the dance recital, or you've got a project do at work or whatever it is that comes up and you miss one of your days Mm -hmm. and you just roll with it. Like it doesn't crush your week. It doesn't derail you so far. And well, Oh, if I miss the Thursday, I guess I'm just going to miss the next four weeks. It doesn't like, that's just how you work. You know that there's going to be a hiccup along the way. It's, it's a given. It's not going to be a smooth path of this is my training schedule for the next three months. And I will never have a bump on the road. It's going to have issues and you just adjust the schedule and roll with it. Right. It's like you just said, it's, it's actually kind of the opposite of what you just said about how sometimes when you come home and you want to go out for a run or whatnot and the kids are saying no don't go for a run stay with us that it it is a better choice for you to go out and take that run sometimes it's not the better choice yes you know sometimes you are needed more at home or you are needed in another aspect of your life and you understand that and you understand that it's okay if you miss a run that one day because you're going to get right back on to to it the next day you know or the next time you're you're scheduled to run it's not going to derail your entire plan of running. Right. You know, the real life runner fully accepts the line of, I'm a runner even on days that I don't run. You know, when when your family's needing you or whatever it is, is calling you and you've already got the mental clarity and you're like, no, I don't have to be with my family right now. I'm choosing to be with my family. I'm choosing that I'm not going to go for my run today and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that that line because that's ultimately what it is. You are a runner even on the days that you aren't actually going for a run because of what that means in your life and where you choose to prioritize and value it. Right. It's all about making your priorities. And that's a great segue into our next category. Nailed it. Yeah. So those are some of the qualities of a real life runner. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about the values of a real life runner. And, you know, we separate these out, but they're all kind of intertwined. I separated them out because otherwise there'd be too many bullet points. So yeah, really... it makes it easier to outline. <laughs> Right. So some of the values of a real life runner, one of the big ones that we talk about constantly, not only on the podcast, but also with the the people that we coach, um, is this idea of the growth mindset or the spirit of experimentation, having that ability to learn from what happens and not be afraid to play and to experiment. Right. There's, there's this sense of curiosity. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a very childlike thing of like, "Hmm, I wonder what could happen with this. Right. Like, you know, there's, there's sometimes people get into races and they get so nervous before a race even starts. Like, Oh, it's, five degrees colder than I expected, or it's raining, or ooh, there's a headwind. What if I take it out a little bit too fast? What if I take it out a little bit too slow? And they're just so concerned about other things instead of being like, huh, 
what if I take it out a little bit too fast? Then what would happen? Mm -hmm. well, yeah, then what would happen? Yeah. Maybe maybe then you actually hold on and you run a PR. Yeah. What if you do take it out too slow? Maybe you then negatively split the race and you run a PR. Mm -hmm. Like don't don't have the question with this like, oh, because if I do that, then everything's going to be a train wreck. Mm -hmm. Well, but that could happen too. And that's part of it is just being okay with whatever that outcome is. Yes. It's, it's having that experimental mindset and saying, okay, I wonder what happens if I take it out <laughs> faster this time around like I either am going to have a really great race or I might crash and burn and if I crash and burn then I will know better for next time yes lesson learned and right. that's that's the huge part of the experimental mindset is try this and then learn the lesson there's not a failure at the end of it mm -hmm. if you take it out fast and you crash and burn that's not failing that's learning that you went out faster than your body's speed limit yeah, and so that's all it's all part of this experiment that we have in running and that's one of the wonderful ways to learn more and to play around with what we also call the growth mindset. Okay. Now this is a concept that's in the literature now. It's we did not come up with the growth mindset, but basically Wouldn't that be awesome if we invented the growth I know, mindset? I know. But there's a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. And basically if you're someone that has a fixed mindset around something, you basically say I am a slow runner and then that becomes a definition that defines you and you then think that those are the qualities you have and that they are unchangeable essentially that these are this is what you're born with this is what I'm working with and there's nothing much that I can really do about it it's you're essentially limited by these fixed belief systems that you have around whatever it is so in this case let's say running right so there's people in the race who are faster than you right. there's people in the race who are slower than you but you have your spot in the mm -hmm. race and and that's just where you run. Yeah, I'm a slow runner. You know, I, I hear that from people all the time. And it, it, I used to say it, you know, so I can't say that it drives me crazy because I used to be that person. I know, but I so think I it drove it. you crazy when you were there. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think it did because it's a safety blanket. Oh, good point. You know, like when you, when you say like, I'm a slow runner, like it's fine. Like, it's like, I'm already like beating you to the punch that like, I'm not trying to beat you because I'm slow. Like yeah. I don't have mm -hmm. to, it's, it's a safety blanket. But then at the same time, you've also defined the people in front of you as fast mm -hmm. and the people behind you, but I'm a slow runner, but I'm not a walker. Right. And then there's the people back there of like, oh, well I, I just walk. Yeah. I don't even run. Right. Cause you've already defined yourself and limited yourself there. Because they're afraid to see what that would be like. Right. You know? and, so, and that's part of what a growth mindset is. A growth mindset is being open to the possibility it's it's saying I, I I'm not there yet. It's that word yet. You mm -hmm. know, it's 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 understanding that you can learn and you can improve and that skills can be learned. You you are not defined by a set of certain talents, certain skills, certain beliefs that you're just stuck with. Like you are able to grow and evolve and learn and you know, become whatever kind of person you want to be. Right. So inside of the growth mindset, there's this constant willingness to test mm -hmm. where you're at. Like, okay, well, this is, this is where I've been at, but let's see what else I can do. So you can test, you run, you race, you live outside of your comfort zone because outside of your comfort zone is where you start actually pushing limits and seeing what more you can do and what more is possible. And because you are willing to fail because you don't see not achieving a goal as a failure, it's just a chance to learn something, mm -hmm. you're willing to take all sorts of risks out there. Yeah. It's, it's a much more fun way to race and run when you have this willingness to learn from every race, mm -hmm. where every race is a new chance to experiment and try something and just see what happens. Yeah. And that's one of the big lessons that I learned last year is, is, is I, I fully embrace this idea of this experimental mindset. And it was so much fun. But the other thing I want to point out about it is just because you have a growth mindset or an experimental mindset um, and you want to improve, that doesn't mean that you aren't happy with where you are right now. I think another big part of the real life runner and the values of a real life runner is gratitude and it's appreciating where you are right now in the journey, but you're also looking to improve and move forward. Yes, that's huge. It's not settling. But it's it's complete uh, acceptance and gratefulness yeah. for wherever you are. You're not looking at your current thing and seeing that it's limited, seeing that it's not as far as you want to be. You have no negative 
towards your current state. Mm-hmm. And yet, you I, I mean, still want to be moving forward. Yeah, I don't think it's no negative. I, I mean, I think that we're all humans and that this is, this is a, a conscious choice because we very easily can slip into a negative mentality. Right, so <laughs> the super enlightened you've reached that state of real life runner zen there has no negative mind frame ever. <laughs> right. Wouldn't that be wonderful? But I mean, you know, that is the ideal that we're all working towards. And again, growth mindset here, right? Growth mindset. Like, and these are the values of of a real life runner. Like I can still say that I'm a real life runner, but I know that I'm still not all the way there yet because I'm still learning and growing and evolving every single day. Yeah. I mean, I got a big race coming up and I am heading into this one much more mentally clear and mentally like, okay. And not as you know nervous about it. Mm-hmm. And yet every once in a while, you're still going to get that, that thing that just pops up. Like there's Always. a, there's a, there's a saying among like marathoners of, can you ever look at your training schedule and say, yep, fully prepared for this one. <laughs> like <laughs> It's 26 26- Point two miles. There's a lot of things that can happen in that distance. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. So you appreciate where you are right now, but you're always looking to improve. You're always looking to challenge yourself in new ways to see what it is that you're actually capable of. So I think that does a decent job of wrapping up growth and experimental mindset. Uh, value number two that I want to highlight is they see the bigger picture. Like running is an important thing in their life. Like, let's not ignore that. Running is part of them, real life runner. But running is just one aspect of healthy living. It includes exercise, nutritious food, this positive and grateful state of mind. There's a lot of aspects to being a healthy person that is not just a person who runs and therefore you're healthy. There's a much bigger picture and running is an aspect of it. Yeah. And it's keeping all of that in perspective also. It's understanding that there are some days that it is a good idea for you to skip your run and sleep in because that's what's better for your overall health. And that's actually what's better for your running also. Yeah. Like sometimes for your running, it is better for you to skip a day of running in order to sleep more and allow your body the recovery it needs so that you can actually come back stronger and not end up injured or sick or something that's going to knock you out for a longer period of time. Yeah, the real life runner doesn't kind of shortcut all other areas of their life Mm -hmm. so that they can get in an extra couple of miles. Like, oh, well, I'm not going to be able to cook dinner tonight. I'll just hit the drive through, but then I'll be able to get three extra miles onto my run. That's not the balance that you're looking for. Mm, I mean, and sometimes it is. You know, sometimes I wouldn't say drive through, but there are some. That's why I put drive through. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that I, I, that's not in my healthy living book <laughs> personally. Like, and and I'm not judging anyone that does choose to do that, but I think that you know I'm the kind of person that likes to cook my own food, and I understand that real life schedules and things get hectic and busy, and it does take planning ahead of time, and it takes preparation, and it takes grocery shopping and, and things like that. And all of those things have become much easier now with the modern conveniences we have. Like you can order your groceries online and have them delivered to your house. Like you don't even have to go to the grocery store in most areas anymore. I mean, maybe in some um, rural areas, Mm -hmm. they might not have that option. And so there are limitations of real life and I get that. And, And I just want, you know, again, no judgment. Like we all make our own choices, but understanding that all of those choices have a role to play in your health and also in your running because if you are fueling your body with fast food from a drive through restaurant that's not going to be as good of fuel for yourself as an athlete as something that you would make at home most likely yeah but i mean it's it's still a process you know the you know let's go back to the growth mindset let's have a just general growth living here yeah. of if you're trying to improve and generally overhaul your whole health Mm -hmm. it's tough to overhaul everything simultaneously so there's a lot of steps like we're we're well on this journey we've been on this journey for years Mm -hmm. and at the beginning of it there there was you know some takeout like Mm -hmm. it it has to happen because you're trying to fit everything in i mean i remember having takeout a lot when i was in high school because i had i had sports and my sister had different sports and there's just a lot of people trying to take this kid here and that kid there and Mm -hmm. parent at work and there's a lot of stuff going on so You fit everything in as best you can, but you try to say, yes, running is one aspect of it. And so if 
if I want to have like a home cooked meal, but I also want to get my run in, maybe that run has to get cut in half and that's going to be okay because it, it creates a balance. Mm -hmm. Or if, you know, you have someone at home that can help you, maybe you, you start having those conversations of, Hey, like I need to get my run in today. I missed it this morning because I needed to sleep in a little. Can you take over dinner prep for me tonight mm -hmm. so I can get some miles in after work? Right. That's a great way of looking at it too. So in the whole bigger picture idea, there's also this idea that for, you know, for everything, there's a season that there's different aspects of your life. And sometimes there are areas that you're going to prioritize over other ones. And that doesn't mean that you have to do that for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's something big happening at work. Maybe you just had a kid. There are things that are going to take the priorities that might push running to the back burner. And there's other times where you've got a race coming up in a month and running moves towards the forefront and you just let the other people in your family know, look, this is going to be a priority right now. And there's a deadline to it. Like there's an end to it mm -hmm. where priorities are going to flip again. Right. It's all about shifting those priorities, but it's all within the bigger picture. Like you said, because we all have given values and priorities that we establish for ourselves. And sometimes the amount of time that we're able to devote to each of those priorities needs to shift around depending on what exactly is happening in our life. Like exactly what you said. Maybe it's a work thing. Maybe you have a marathon coming up and you're not going to be able to go out with your friends on Friday night because you have to get up really early and run a very long run on Saturday morning. And that's not to say that you don't value your friends or your friendships. It's just saying that right now in this season of your life, this marathon, it needs to take a priority over, you know, Friday night happy hour. Right. But in, in the more specific area of just your general healthy living of making sure that you're sleeping appropriately, that you're getting in your exercise, that you're eating appropriately. It's, it's a, to go back to sort of where we were before, you can prioritize your running up to a point, but taking a little personal on this one, I was at a point a few years ago where I was prioritizing running substantially over sleeping mm -hmm. and trying to be training you know, for a marathon at a pretty high level while sleeping four to five hours a night ends up with really bad repercussions. Right. And for some people, they end up injured. For some people, they end up sick. Um, we think that, that that combination of things is one of the things that led Kevin to having a series of seizures um, that he had in 2017, you know, from chronic sleep deprivation, and just training at a, a crazy high level. And could that, you know, could they be related? Like, we believe they are, you know, but maybe they're not. You know, the doctors still the doctors aren't gave able us, to tell us. They gave us a maybe. <laughs> right. They still aren't able to tell us that, you know, all when all the tests come back negative with nothing to show for it, then we just have to kind of look at our lifestyle and say, okay, like, what's going on right now that could be contributing to this? And, you know, that's a big one is, you know, lack of sleep. Lack of sleep. I mean, sleep is super important regardless of, of what you're trying to do with your life. Mm -hmm. Whatever area you're trying to, to show up your best at, you need to show up rested. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just not going to be your best self it will catch up to you eventually yeah like it will like there are some people who are like oh i just don't need a lot of sleep you know and then it catches up to them eventually it might not always show up right away and they might think that they're superhuman because they can go on three to four hours of sleep every night and just be you know knock it out in running and knock it out at work but it's going to catch up eventually they can't figure out why they're super super sick for like a week every two mm -hmm. months right because when they're not sick they are firing on all cylinders and but then their body shuts it down i also think think that it leads to chronic disease down the road yeah, like if it's if, if it doesn't end up like in acute disease processes right then like getting sick or getting injured or those kinds of things i think it does catch up to the, you eventually down eventually. the road eventually it's coming yeah. so you see the bigger picture you take all aspects of healthy living and put them all together and running is one of those aspects but it's not the only one Ax absolutely so our third value of a real life runner is that the someone that is a real life runner really understands the importance of confidence and belief in themselves. Yes, the belief is huge because if you don't believe that you can do something, you're well, you're just not going to do it. Right. You know, as as our kid would point out, you're manifesting it. Yeah, <laughs> you're manifesting or you're self sabotaging. We talked about that a couple episodes back as well. But understanding that running is 90% mental and 10% physical and understanding that 
in order to be a runner, in order to be a real life runner, you have to start mastering this mind game. You start, you have to start dealing with all of the demons that come up because we all have these little demons that tell us we can't do something or that this is going to be too hard. Are you sure you want to do this? Is it worth it for you? Like when it starts, you know, when you're out running, sometimes it doesn't feel good. Like if you've been running for any period of time, ever you know like you understand that every run is not all sunshine and rainbows no especially like if you can (laughs) if you've been running for a while and you think back to when you started those first few runs were definitely not sunshine and rainbows right and if you're a new runner just understand that it does get better okay just stick with it it does get better yeah and then you're probably going to take some time off maybe it's time off from an illness time off because something else came up or whatever it is and getting back it's is going to be a a slow road and some of the runs are going to be fantastic. And then every once in a while, there's going to be that run that pops up. That's like, well, that was not a good run. Yeah. It just doesn't feel great. Right. And I think that some people, when they get into running, they don't really believe that they are a runner. Like, Oh, I, I'm just, I just jog a couple of times a week or I just go out and I do like a little run walk. So I'm not really a runner and they don't have that confidence to say like, I am a runner like to, to people and to let other people know that that's one of the things that they do or one of the things that they enjoy because they just don't have that level of confidence yet. Um, And I think that that is something that can be learned over time. I think that it's one of those things that we tend to develop, but it it is also something that you can choose to have right now. Yeah. It is a choice. Yeah. You can choose to have that, that level of confidence. It's something that you have to when you're first getting into it, choose over and over and over and over and Mm -hmm. just keep telling yourself that you have the confidence, you have the belief and you say it over and over and and it comes, Mm -hmm. you know, but for someone who has this confidence belief, you go out, you set goals, you make a plan and you follow through on the plan. You don't just set goals to tell people, look, these are my cool goals. Like you set a plan, you, you set the goal, you make a plan, you follow through on it. You've got the confidence that that success is coming yes it's the belief that it is possible like it's not because if if you don't believe that it's actually possible you're not going to do the work to actually get there so you have to have that belief because all major success comes from accepting the inevitability of that success like my success is inevitable if I put the work in I am going to achieve this outcome yeah that's it's the guaranteed success and that that one takes a lot it takes a lot of practice on that oh, one. Oh, that one take that <laughs> one does not come easily and it's still something I think that we all work on every day every day you know these are all works in progress this is all a journey this is your running journey it's your life journey and it's these things that we practice day in and day out that give ourselves you know we we give ourselves our own belief system a belief is simply something that we've repeated to ourselves over and over and over again so if you don't like the beliefs that you currently have about yourself or about your running or about your life then change the story you're telling yourself because you can change your beliefs just by telling yourself a different story over and over and over again yeah i know i i remember when i first started getting into this stuff like my dad gave me some books like back in high school about like you know what to think about while you're running and i was like this is really the i just tell myself i'm a fast runner and i'm gonna be a fast runner (laughs) personal mantras and all this stuff and like yeah if you repeat over and over again that this run is not painful that i am running fast Mm -hmm. you know i mean that was the one where i got the the line of i am a knife cutting through the wind Mm -hmm. like if you're running into a crazy headwind you're like well there's this race is gonna go poorly that line is i am a knife i cut through the wind and off you go yeah. You know, and, and it works. And it you're does like, work. Like, this shouldn't work just saying these lines over and over again. But when you say it again and again, your mind doesn't think that you're lying. Mm-hmm. Your mind accepts that the thoughts going through it are absolute facts. So you tell it you're a knife that cuts through the wind, and your mind's like, all right, I am a knife that cuts through the wind. Look at me go. <laughs> That's the voice and, that my mind speaks in. And he also put both hands on his hips as he delivered that line into the microphone. Just, just to give you guys all a visual of what's happening hands right now. Hips, pop the hip, nail it. <laughs> Power pose. And so anyway, yes, because when you tell yourself these things, you're actually taking on an identity. You're taking on a persona of who you want to become. And 
maybe you're a knife cutting through the wind. Maybe you're just someone that doesn't give up. Like I am a person that doesn't give up. Like this is one of the things that I used in my last 5K is like it needs to be uncomfortable. Like this is this should be uncomfortable. Keep pushing because I am someone that pushes. I am someone that does not let up. That's something that I kept repeating to myself. Like do not let up. I am not a person that lets up. I am a person that leans in and I keep going when it gets hard. Like that is the person that I am and therefore those are the actions that I'm taking. I didn't allow myself to let up. I mean my body naturally did a little bit. I think I could have probably pushed a little bit more, you know, always look looking back on it, right? You always think you can go faster once you've crossed the finish line. But I, I, that's what I had that day. I did cross the finish line that day and say, I was happy with my outcome and that's what I had that day. But it's those personal mantras, it's the personal identity statements, whatever it is you want to call them. Some people might look at them and say, oh, that's cheesy. But you want to call it cheesy, then that means you're just going to write off what we're saying right now. And you can live in your current bubble of what you think is reality and you can live there and question why you're not getting any better or you can try something new on and see how that works you could tell yourself you're a slow runner or you could tell yourself a fast runner and just see what happens and just see what happens what's the worst that happens you get faster Mm -hmm. or the worst that happens is that you're still right where you are yeah which isn't going to happen right the worst that happens is you have the same exact outcomes Mm -hmm. and that's not wasting any time to just try a positive frame of mind take on the persona of someone who's faster you said I'm a person who doesn't quit when it gets hard and so that means when the race got hard you have to keep pushing because Mm -hmm. that's what you told yourself Mm -hmm. I push when it gets hard so you have to then push and that means you cross the finish line faster than you would have if you took on the persona of I slow down when it gets hard Mm -hmm. or I'm a slow runner so you there were plenty of points in the race where I'm like this does not feel good. I could I could let up right now and nobody would care. Yeah. Like and and that that thought goes through your mind also. And there yeah, you could say you're right. Nobody would care. Like nobody cares about my time except me. Like my kids are still going to give me a hug when I cross the finish line. <laughs> my husband is still going to high five me and say, "Hey, how'd your race go?" Like all of that is still going to be true. But there will I am still the be person, pancakes. There will still be pancakes at the end. But I am the person that doesn't let up when it gets hard. I am the person that keeps pushing. I'm the person that keeps going. And so that's what I had to do. And so then you had the success of the person that keeps going. Then you had the joy crossing the finish line. You Mm -hmm. had the satisfaction crossing the finish line. And and that, that's what you want. Like you want to be the person who can see the clock at the finish line and know I gave everything I could have that day and therefore I am going to be smiling my way across the finish line. Mm -hmm. Like you've seen these people at the finish line who are like high-fiving down the finishing chute, grinning from ear to ear as they're crossing the finish line. Like they are struggling, they're breathing as hard as they possibly can, you're a little nervous for them, and yet they're (laughs) still smiling through all the pain because they are filled with joy at the success that they just had. Yeah. So to be a real life runner, you really need to start trying on those different identities and start trying on those different personas and see what happens. Because when you say, I'm a real life runner, I am someone that doesn't give up, I am someone that keeps pushing, then you have to live in accordance with that identity. And that's going to help bring you to a whole nother level. Right. But um, there are, of course, challenges along the way. There are. You know, we've alluded to some of them already actually um but just to to state some of these guys and we're not just gonna like you know rain on the parade here we we sum this thing up with the rewards of being a real life runner but there are some (laughs) challenges that come with being a real life runner Mm -hmm. you know specifically you run in the real world like you're not a professional runner i don't think we have pros listening to us you run in the real world and life can throw off your schedule Mm -hmm. you know we've talked about that before but real life runners accept that It's okay to miss a day. It's okay even if that day was a workout. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, this was my speed day. It's okay because there's not some magic workout on your schedule that if you miss that, everything you've done for the last year has just been for waste. I think that's a really hard one for a lot of people. Like missing a day on a schedule can be something that can really derail a lot of people's schedules and their whole day. And then they start to question, you know, their abilities and start to question their preparation. Like I think missing a a run is something that a lot of people struggle with. Yeah, missing a run. But the real life runner, one, they could miss a run. Mm -hmm. Like if... 
if life happened, maybe you went out with friends, maybe suddenly there was a birthday party that got thrown in and you were out way later than you were planning on. And so you couldn't get up and run the next morning. It's going to be okay to have an off day in there or real life runners are completely okay with kind of manipulating their schedule and being like, all right, I can move things around. This workout can go on to this day. And I just, I miss that run. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something's going to get missed along the way, but the adjustments are possible. Mm -hmm. The real life runner also understands that there's going to be temptations everywhere and there's going to be a lot of people that don't understand them. I think that's a really big part of being a runner and a real life runner. Yeah, that's why I I put temptations from the non-running community because people who are not real life runners don't see them as temptations. They just Mm -hmm. see them as a cookie sitting there on the plate. (laughs) Or, you know, a a drink at happy hour, you know, something like that. And there are times that all that is fine. But then there's other times you have to remember that you are a runner, which means you are an athlete. And you need to fuel your body appropriately if you want to achieve the goals that you set for yourself. Right. So if you got to run the next day... Maybe you you can you can go in go out and have the drink at happy hour, sure. but happy hour then can't be extended to eleven thirty at night. Right, that's not matching up nicely. Right, maybe one drink at happy hour, sure. and not four drinks at happy hour. Yeah. You know that's going to affect your run the next that, day. That's different fueling for the next day. That's different fueling. <laughs> that's, right. that's not rocket fuel. Yeah, they also understand that like the non runners don't really understand their dedication, their mentality, why they do what they do. I mean, how many times have we gotten that question? Yeah, it, all the time. Like non-runners... They just don't get it. That's true. I, there's no there's no better way of saying it. And it comes off as a little judgy, but honestly, they just don't get it. Yeah, they don't. Like they, And they're like, oh, yeah, how long how long was that marathon that you did the other day? Like, oh, you, you just ran one, one of those... How, how, how'd your marathon go? Well, that, that was a 5k. It was a 5k. Just a 5k. <laughs> yeah. You know, like they just, they don't get it. And you know, w- but on the other hand, real life runners also, I don't think understand non runners. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like their lack of knowledge for things. Like when you're like, Oh, I just went on a five mile run. Like when we, we use that word to yes. like, you know, kind of like, oh, it was only a half marathon. Like I have definitely listed on my schedule, easy 10. Yeah. And and they're (laughs) like, non-runners are like, wait, only a half marathon? Like how many miles was that? Like they can't even comprehend going out and running four miles, which for you is like a nothing kind of run. For other people, they're not not even, you know, they've never done that in their life. Right. I mean, I I get students that ask me this every once in a while, like, how far did you run over the weekend? And and I'll tell them, they're like, I don't think I could run to the end of the hall. And like, okay, well, you could probably run to the end of the hall, but you probably would have to start walking if you tried to run all the way to the end of the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And so to, to run something in double digits is just beyond comprehension for a lot of people who have never made it that far. You know, but there's also real life runners who are in the world where the farthest they've ever gone is like three or four miles. Yeah. And so they're looking at people who are up there and you know, they've they've done a half marathon, they've done a marathon or crazy ultra runners and they're like, Well I could never I could never be that person. Mm-hmm. That and you have not fully accepted the identity because you can be. It's a growth. It's a journey. You can do whatever you want to do. It just might take you a little bit of time to get there. And it's also the desire. You know, they might not ever have a desire to run a full marathon. Very much the desire. And that's okay, too. Like, you can be a real-life runner and just run 5Ks if you want or 10Ks or half marathons or whatever distance makes your heart happy. You don't have to run a full marathon to say, I am a real-life runner or I'm now a runner. And I think that's one of the big things, too. A lot of people want to qualify as a runner. They want to say like, you know, oh, oh, I run, but I'm not really a runner and because they, they feel like they're some sort of qualifying standard to become a runner, which there just isn't. Yeah. Yeah. Take the, take the sidetrack here for a second of just, I'm a runner. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people that are like, well, once I run 20 miles a week, once I run, you know, 30 miles a week and that number just keeps moving forward because they don't identify themselves. They don't see themselves as a runner. They look around and see other people like, oh, that person's a runner. Mm -hmm. Or, okay, well, now I'm running 30 miles a week, but I'm not running them at a fast pace. I'm not fast enough. Right. Right. Or I'm doing 20 miles a week, but I just, I run walk. Or Mm -hmm. I haven't even run a race all year, so I'm not a real runner. Right. Like, no, you, you run. You are a runner. Right. And that's basically in order to be a runner or a real runner, you have to call yourself a runner and you have to take on that identity and act like a runner. Runner. Like, what are the actions that a runner takes? What are the actions that a real life runner takes? And that's basically what we're talking about right now. 
Yeah. So the temptations are out there. Um, and the real life runner, again, looks at the bigger picture and says, okay, I, I can have this temptation. I can choose when I want to. I don't need to do it all the time. I'm going to fuel my body appropriately. But if I want to have, you know, a drink with some friends or I want to have dessert or whatever it is, I want to stay out late. That's okay to do every once in a while also because Mm -hmm. look, food isn't good or bad. You know, sleep is not a a moral issue. It's it's part of your overall lifestyle. And the real life runner accepts the big picture healthy living lifestyle. Right. Another challenge of the real life runner is that they have to try to fit it all in. I think this is one of the biggest challenges and questions that we get and things that people struggle with is trying to fit it all in. How do I do it? How do I fit in my running and my strength training and my health and my job and my family and all the other obligations that I have in my life? Because it feels like a jigsaw puzzle sometimes. And so real life runners understand that it is going to feel that way sometimes and that things do need to get shifted around like we talked about earlier. There are different priorities and they have to understand that they need to listen to their body and treat it with rest and recovery if needed. Like there are times that life gets really, really stressful. And so it's really trying to like squeeze another couple of miles in or, or take that run and, and try to get it in just so that you can check that box on your training schedule might not be the best choice for you. It might be better for you to take some to rest and recovery and understand that that is really the better thing for you to do. Oh, hundred percent. I think, um, a good quality the value of the real life runner is someone who says, okay, this is supposed to be a speed day for me, but it's been really stressful at work or with my kids all day long. And so I'm not going to be able to push as hard as I want. Mm -hmm. Like they don't have to push faster than the suggested pace on every single workout. Like I'm supposed to be doing mile repeats at, I don't know, 745 and I'm going to do them all at 740. Mm -hmm. Like it's okay if it's been a rough day and you're going to do them at eight. It's okay if you're not even going to do that speed run that day. Yeah. And, and, and you're yet, just going to trade it for a recovery day. Yeah. But to the other side, it's also okay to push on other days and be mm-hmm. like, yo, was the recommended pace, you know, here? Well, I'm going to take it down to a whole nother level. Is it supposed to be quarters and 90 seconds? Watch them, watch me hit them all in 85. Mm-hmm. You know, the real life runner knows that there are days to push, there are days to pull back. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so while we have these values and qualities, characteristics, challenges, there are also so many rewards and good things that come into your life through running and by taking on this identity of real life runner. And number one, I think for me especially, is that running is about more than you. Like running can be a path to spirituality and to God or to whatever spiritual being that you feel most connected to. And and that's that higher sense of self. It's the higher sense of purpose. It's elevating us to be higher versions of ourselves. And by doing that, by becoming better versions of ourself, we help to also elevate the world around us and bring like other people around us up with us. Yeah. I mean, it really takes running way beyond, you know, lace up some shoes and head out on the road. Like running can be an empowering movement for the world. Mm -hmm. And it's weird to think like, well, I'm just going to tie on some shoes and go do my like four mile loop that that could have ripple effects on the world, but it could totally like okay, like how, how could that possibly happen? Well, what if you're driving down the road and someone's driving home, they had a bad day at work, they're in a bad mood and they see you running out there. Maybe it's a rainy day and you're out there running through the like nasty weather, getting in your miles and they're like, huh, maybe I should go for a run. And instead of going home and like taking it out on, on the family at home or, you know, whatever, you know, possible destructive behavior they could have, they're like, maybe I'm going to go for a run. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe I'm going to go for a bike ride. Maybe they don't follow the same exact path, but they choose something positive to be like, you, you could have inspired that. Yeah. You really have no idea how many people you've inspired just by doing what you do every single day. And that is something that is so powerful and is such a thing that just elevates running to this whole nother level. Right. It's, it's the idea that when you run, you get a chance to see what 
what is possible. Mm -hmm. And it's not just what's possible in you. It's what's possible in you and everyone around you Mm -hmm. because running is a a hugely supportive community. Like it's really a massively supportive group of people. If you've ever been nervous about like joining a running group or going to a race, like, Ooh, I don't want to go to the race. Then people are going to look at me. They're not going to think I'm fast enough. Go to the race. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to be supported. People are going to cheer you on. There's going to be strangers clapping for you at the finish line. It's going to be fine. It's an incredibly supportive group of people. Mm -hmm. That's what runners are. So you're not just trying to live your best. You're trying to live your best while helping other people live their best. Right. And be a part of that community because races are these times that you can really celebrate and have a very tangible result of all of the hard work that you've been putting in. Like you can see the success that you've been able to have because there's a time on the clock. There's a feeling at the end of the race. There is a start line and there is a a finish line. And when you cross that finish line, even if the race doesn't go exactly the way you wanted it to or exactly as you planned it, there's still something very positive that can be gained from every single race that you run. And how, you know, how great of a metaphor is that for life in general? Like we all have races that we're running in our life, not just literal road races that we're running, but also races and journeys in all the different areas of our lives. Right. And if you want to feel success, if you want to feel satisfaction with it, then you have the, there's this deeper value when you cross the finish line, whether it's an actual finish line in a race or, you know, finish line in in some area of your life, when you know that you've given it everything that you could have. The level of satisfaction is completely different than when you're like, "Eh, I gave it enough. Like the level that you gave it what you could, you brought the best that you could on that day in those conditions that you brought your best self, then the satisfaction is, is great. And maybe, you know, maybe you didn't hit the time you wanted on the clock and there's a brief sting, but the deeper satisfaction by knowing that you gave everything that you possibly could have, that's the real life runner. Mm -hmm. And it's also understanding that sometimes you know, just enough is the best that you've got on that given day. Yeah. Like sometimes like that's, you know what, that's, that's what I had. Like, could I have given more? Probably, you know, but really that's, that's what I was willing to give today. It, uh, it reminds me of, you know, having the newborns. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, this, this is what I've got because it's three o'clock in the morning and you were just awake (laughs) at two o'clock in the morning. And, and somehow you're up again and there's spit up all over the place and something's dripping off my left elbow and I didn't turn the light on so I don't even know what it is. So <laughs> let, we're just going to get you back in some clothes. This is what I've got. Yeah. You know, because cause that's, that's what you do. Sometimes good enough is good enough. Sometimes good enough is the best that you possibly have. Right. That's the thing. Like other people might look at it and be like, it looks like they're really just kind of getting by. And you're like, nope, that is the best I could under these circumstances. On this given day. That was everything I had. Yep, exactly. The real life runner also feels like they are in charge of their life. Now, this is something that we want to kind of make a little distinction about here because they feel in charge of themselves as a person, as a runner of their, you know, their running journey because they apply running to life and then they apply life to running because they're continuously striving for greater levels of success. They feel in charge of that process. Yeah, they realize that that life is full of choices, that they get to go out and actually choose whether they're going to go for a run that day or not, how far the run is, how fast the run is. They get to make all of these choices in life and so they are in charge of them. They're not the victim of their life Mm -hmm. and yet they're not in complete control. Right. So this is this is the distinction that we want to make they are in charge but they are not in control and they realize that they are not fully in control well that's what opens you up to the possibility to just keep trying right when you have this experimental mindset when you know that your success is inevitable there's there's the caveat there of success is inevitable my timeline is not my control. Right. Like I can make choices. I can aim for this thing. I can shoot for this goal. I can follow the plan, but I am not in complete control of the timeline. And yet I'm still going to strive. I'm still going to give everything that I can. Yeah. And they're okay with that. And like, there are some goals that, 
people might set, that you might set, that we might set, that you're really not sure if you're going to ever really be able to hit. And those are the, you know, the scary goals. Those are the really, really big goals. Like maybe you have a a goal of qualifying for Boston one day. Maybe you have a goal of just completing a marathon. Like whatever it might be, you're really not sure if you are going to complete that or to achieve that goal, but you are going to keep working as if you are going to achieve that goal. Exactly. That just because you might not get it doesn't mean you shouldn't try Mm -hmm. because there's enough of you that believes that you might get Mm -hmm. it. And that means that the journey is worthwhile. There is a possibility. The possibility exists. And so I've got to give it a shot. I've got to try and I've got to try it with everything that I can. Because if the possibility is slim, trying just a little bit is definitely not getting you there. Mm -hmm. You're going all in on the chance that you might have a shot at that crazy scary dream yeah exactly because the real life runner understands that the goals the dreams the journey is what's important and that having those guideposts that are pushing you forward and challenging you moving you out of your comfort zone that's really what this journey is about that's what life is about running is about so much more than just running running helps us to become better people it helps us to show up better as spouses as parents as employees or employers like whatever role you have in your life running is a tool that you can use to elevate yourself in all areas of your life. Right. I mean, the ultimate goal, whether it's, it's as, as a person who uses running or you use running onto your life, the goal is to live your best possible life, to Mm -hmm. elevate yourself in all areas. In all areas. And that I think is a perfect segue into our runner of the week. Runner of the week. Runner of the week. So last week we celebrated all the members of our tribe and all the amazing successes that you all had in 2019. And thank you to everyone that shared those with us in our tribe. So This week, we want to get back to our runner of the week, and we want to recognize one person in our community, in our tribe, that has just had an amazing couple of months, but but really, um, you know, last week she ran her third full marathon, and it was in honor of her brother, yes, who tragically passed away a couple of years ago, and now she runs in honor of him. She was not a runner beforehand, and because of him and his life and his legacy, he's now inspired her to start running, and then now there's this marathon in his honor, and there's this whole foundation, and um, so again, one runner, this one guy, is someone that has now inspired this huge ripple effect. And his sister, Heidi Wells, Woo-hoo! who is our runner of the week this week, is a perfect example of how you know running is about so much more than just ourselves. So congratulations to Heidi Wells. Way to go, Heidi! Our runner of the week for this week. Congratulations on your recent PR in your third full marathon. You ran such a great race um and obviously that felt had to have felt so good i know that you did share with the tribe how good it felt to actually complete that race and run it and feel strong especially your brother's race yeah i mean there was a lot there was a lot of mental that she was overcoming in that one as well Mm -hmm. as you know obviously the physical challenge of running 26 miles but to run 26 miles in a race that is your brother's race that's that's pretty special. Yeah, it's very special. So Heidi, congratulations. You are doing some amazing things and we are so excited to just help you continue down your running journey. And so we contacted Heidi and let her know that we chose her to be our runner of the week. And this is what she wrote to us. I believe to be successful at pretty much anything in life, there are two things you need. One is you need to know yourself. You need to know what motivates you, what makes you happy, how you look at challenges, how you prefer to interact with others. If you accomplish more in the mornings or evenings, what kind of structure works best for you, and so on. Even at 53, I'm still working on that, but I definitely know for me to be successful, I must have accountability, even if it's just a note on the calendar. My personality is such that if that note is there and it makes sense to me, I will do it. I do best with rules and guidelines and structure. So I jumped at the opportunity to take part in the Real Life Runners Training Academy. Having a customized training schedule provided by knowledgeable coaches is what I want. The other thing you need to be successful is information. 
The Real Life Runner podcast, social media, and website provide information about running in a helpful, accessible, and entertaining way. And unlike some other sources I've found that focus on elite runners, RLR offers information and experiences I can relate to. Runners quickly learn that non-runners don't always understand the motivation to run. So (laughs) having that community to discuss running with is fun. That's awesome. That's so funny. She didn't know what we were talking about this week. No. But she really hit on a great summary of this week's episode. So Nailed it. Nailed it, Heidi. Way to go. Um, so, Heidi, thank you so much for sharing your journey with us in the tribe and allowing us to be a part of your journey, your successes, and everything in between. Um, we're so happy and excited for what you've accomplished so far, and we're so excited to see what's ahead for you. Yeah, she's certainly not done. Oh, she's just starting out, and that's super <laughs> exciting. So congratulations, Heidi. And for those of you that might be new to us, um, or those of you that want to get 2020 started off right, we have a brand new free five day running challenge that we have started. And, um, you can go to five day running challenge.com to check that out. It is a free five day challenge. We start on January 6th, Monday, January 6th. So make sure you sign up today, like go right now to five day running challenge.com and sign up so that you can jump on this and get the benefits of starting your year off right to learn how to get faster, get healthier, get stronger, and run for longer periods of time without getting tired. Those are like some of the major things that we're going to be covering during this challenge. So head over to 5dayrunningchallenge.com to sign up today. As always, we want to thank you for spending this time with us. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate you sharing this podcast with your friends and your running buddies and anyone else that you think could benefit from this information. So this has been the Real Life Runners Podcast, episode number 121. Now get out there and run your life. 